Hello, sassy sleuths, Evie Bug here, and welcome to another episode inside of Nancy Drew, Tomb of the Lost Queen. Where we left off, we had just gotten some light into this room with a tomb, and um, we're trying to get it open. Um, but, I mean, there's this hole here, so maybe we can, like, leverage it with, like, sticks and things? Let's see. Let's see if that's... Let's see if that'll do it. I'm not, not quite. strong enough. I need something else too. Okay, so we're gonna have to find something else, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so let's see. Um, we s met some new people, so that was kind of neat. Um, let's see, but we did hear a crash out here, so we need to make sure that Abdullah's okay. Yes. Is it strange that some of the hieroglyphs don't make sense? There is a saying. If a lion could speak, we would not understand him. So, let's say one day, magically, poof! A very smart lion learns to speak the king's English. How he understands the world is so radically different that even though you understand the words he spoke, you could never understand what he was trying to say. Is that how you think of the ancient Egyptians? Yes. Now let me show you why I am the best archaeologist in the world, in one simple step. Okay, go ahead. I am Ramses II. I thought you looked familiar. Please, I am much more handsome than he was. Now pay attention. I, Ramses II, I look at my kingdom. Look at it with me. Be Ramses with me. Come now, survey the kingdom. We are kings. Look at the sands. They part in the most elegant tribute to our majesty. Listen to the river. You are not doing it. Sorry, I'll try harder. Good. Listen to the river. That is better. The birds of prey and even the deadly serpents bow before us. They look to us as if we were the sun. And remember, we are Ramses. We are the sun, most favored by Ra, sun god. The heartbeat of this world is for us alone. Looking at all of this, what do you want? What could I possibly want? Exactly. Now tell me, what are you afraid of? I guess losing what I have. Yes, you are thinking like a pharaoh. Now tell me, how could you lose what you have? I can't lose anything. I'm the pharaoh. Wrong. You can and you will. You will die, Ramses II. You will be gone and forgotten. Okay, but how does all of this lead to the Lost Queen? For thousands of years, the lion spoke and no one understood. But understand the fear and you understand the man. That was a close call with the scaffolding. I've seen worse. Twenty years ago, we were in a tomb, a minor site. A guide, much like your boy Dylan, kicked over a support beam and crash! It all came down. Seven of us, trapped under stones, big as automobiles. What happened? Five of us were eventually pulled out. What happened to the other two? What do you think happened? Do you think this has anything to do with the curse? Does it matter? Do you believe in the curse? Of course. Really? Then aren't you worried about being here? No, no, no. I am Abdullah Bakum. Curses have no power over me. What makes you so sure of that? I'm still alive. Many men cannot say the same thing. The true power of a curse, it lives here. What do you mean by that? <laughs> the curse of Antifi warns. Any man who enters my tomb, I will cast the fear of myself into him. I went into that tomb. And? And I knew the fear of Antifi. A curse when it has you is like a strange sickness, a fever, and it never goes away. But I thought you didn't believe in curses. No, I said curses have no effect on me. I am strong. Everyone else is a different story. Look at Lily and see what I mean. What do you think of this tomb? What are you getting at? It's amazing! The amount of detail, the size. Well, someone really important must be buried here. 
After 5,000 years of recorded history, that could be said about every hole in the ground. But that's what you think, isn't it? I don't leave the house for anything less than amazing. So, it's safe to assume this is going to be a major find? You tell me. Who do you think is buried here? No, I do not guess. Who are you hoping to find here? Who does everyone want to find? The Lost Queen. Who is that? Nefertari. Why is she lost? Over 100 years ago, they found her tomb. The most magnificent of its kind. But when they opened the tomb, do you know what they found? A different mummy? They found two kneecaps. The queen was nowhere to be found. Why is that? Nobody knows. I say she was never there to begin with. Do you have proof? No. The people who had proof have been dead 100 times longer than they were ever alive. So they're not talking. We have to learn to think like they did. But it's not easy. Anyone who says different lies or is stupid. Do you know Dylan? I know of him. You do? So he has a reputation? He is a very popular guide, for whatever that is worth. I do not like guides. They distort history and turn the other way, as sticky-fingered tourists steal every bit of Egypt they can find. <laughs> that seems a little harsh. Not harsh enough. Every tourist thinks, what will it hurt? I'll just take one small piece of the pyramids. And they come, and they come, by the millions they come. And bit by bit, they smuggle our history back in their luggage. <laughs> They're worse than the museums. Do you think international teams have stolen artifacts from Egypt? No, I do not think. I know. You don't seem very happy to have Dylan here. Good. I'm glad you noticed. If this were my sight, like it should be, he'd be out on the sand with his hat in his hand, trying to catch a ride back to Cairo. And he would never find one, because there is no street. I translated the hieroglyphs. Beginner's luck. I'll let you go. Bye. Okay then, um, wait, what's this? Oh, hey, boards, that might help us to, uh, open up the I tomb I bet I could translate that. I think we already did translate that, okay. So, let's go back. Was it this way? I forget now. I think so. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's open up the tomb. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Let's see, spears, sturdy board, and... Presto! It won't budge. It must be locked. Oh dear. Um, oh great, really? Let's see, um... So let's just assume that the first word is the. Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, let's see. Could this be heavens? It looks like heavens, maybe. Okay, so if that's heavens, let's see. The. Some kind of long word um uh, well then what what's this word because that looks like heaven too <laughs> interesting um see the or see let's see seek them maybe seek them out Uh, unite. Oh wait, no. You um. Let's see. Can I take that one away? Okay, good. Um, let's see. Protection, maybe. This could be protection of the heavens. Okay, let's see. The procession of gods begins the reveal. I need to figure out what this means. The procession of gods begins the reveal. Seek them out under the protection of the heavens. Yeah, I don't know what that I means. I need to get the correct gods to their proper locations. Oh, goodness, what? Oh, dear. Well, what, but how, how do we know how to do that? I 
don't think we do. Okay, well, let's continue searching through these tunnels because they... I don't think we've really searched through everything in all these... Wait, what is this? Actually, we've never been down here before. What is this? Oh, we can't do anything. Okay. Well, apparently there's nothing to find that way. Uh, we've already talked to Abdullah. Let's see if there's anyone... Let's, let's talk to Dylan. Hello. I'd better get going. Come back anytime. And he has nothing to say. Okay. Um, what happened here? Whoa. Where's all of the water? What happened? Who would be crazy enough to do this on purpose? Oh, that's not good. It's not good to be out in the desert without water. That that's that can't end good. Um, let's talk to Lily about this. Oh, wrong bunk. There we go. Hello. Do you think there's something to this curse? I've studied curses, so look. Don't make me say it. Say what? Yes, I do. Even reading about curses gives me the creeps. Why are you reading about curses if they give you the creeps? I know, it's weird. It's like if I can learn everything about curses, then maybe they won't have any control over me. I can tell that you probably don't believe in curses, so please don't make fun of me. I'm not. Sorry, I'm just a bit worked up. I'm probably just being oversensitive. You're too calm. Do you know how effective curses are? They are deadly 76.42% of the time. You know what else has that fatality rating? White water rafting with a hungry bear who also has the bird flu and he's holding dynamite. You said you studied curses. Aren't they just mostly hoaxes? No, far from it. There's always a scientific reason for what really happened, but if you get some deadly disease or the world collapses on you, you're not going to care about the biology or physics of what's killing you. What's that book? Curses of the World, the Compendium of Cruel Curses and Curious Casualties. It does have a lot of C's. That doesn't seem like light reading. I was originally going to go into paleontology, but no, I changed my mind freshman year. Why did no one tell me about how creepy curses are when I switched majors? Dinosaurs were bad news back in the day, but now, totally safe. Mummies, on the other hand, I make poor life choices. And Curses aren't real. You'll be fine. Curses aren't... No. No more taunting the curse. At least not around me. I'm too young to die out here. I have things to do. I'm still in school. I haven't even started my life yet. I'm not tempting fate here, Nancy. I refuse. Okay, I can respect that. What do you think about Dylan? Did we accidentally invite the whole world to this dig? With the exception of a decent work crew, that is. Although I do hate that I don't know why he is here, he is definitely easy on the eyes. Agreed. But if he stays out in the sun any longer, he's going to get all lobstery. Definite turnoff for us land dwellers. What did you think about being there to finally open the tomb? I don't know what to think. When I was near it, it just felt... No, it's stupid. What? Something was in that room with me. Whatever it was, it wasn't human. At least not anymore. Don't go in there. What do you think of Abdullah? Say what you want about how he behaves. He's earned it. I've heard the opposite. I've studied his career. He's a bit of a jerk, but let's face it, when you think of archaeology, you think of him. He's the best. A decade of dedicated study. Okay, I guess you have a point. Thanks. It just bothers me when people are critical of him. He's sort of a hero of mine. I'd better get going. Later. Okay, so uh, she believes in curses then. So that's interesting. Personally, I don't, but hey, that's just me. Um, let's see, now we haven't called people really yet. Um, let's see. Oh, let's call Professor Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss here? It's Nancy Drew. Oh, Francine, dear. I'm so glad you called. I've been having the most infuriating problem with my internet. This is Nancy Drew. Oh, you young people are so refreshing, always in search of new identities. The problem is that I downloaded this program called 
weather monkey. At my age, it's important that I keep abreast of all meteorological developments. But now I'm starting a new book, and I can't focus on my work because the weather monkey keeps yelling the weather at me. Maybe you should uninstall it? I will do no such thing. That would be tantamount to murder. <sighs> Maybe turn it down? Brilliant and fantastic. Oh, yes, Samantha, you are a ticket. I would love to help you, but uh, how do I know you again? Nancy, Drew, we've met a few times. Aha, now I remember you. If life were a good book, you'd be my favorite reoccurring character. I'm in Egypt, and I need your help. Egypt? Well, why didn't you say that instead of chattering away about my internet problems? I don't know how to respond to that. I read your book, and I thought maybe you could help. You found my book while you were in Egypt. <gasps> the serendipity is as delectable as Chateaubriand smothered in lavender lemon juice. I am at your disposal. I didn't exactly find it. You sent it to me. You even signed it. Oh, dear. I sign and send lots of things. Have you heard of an expedition that went off in search of Nefertari years ago? Oh, yes. The team in which everyone died, is that the one? Yes. Do you think that story is true? Oh, heavens, yes. It's deadly out there in the desert. Think about it. You're going out there in search of dead bodies. There must be a reason they're in favor of the area. But this expedition wasn't searching for QB-66, right? Indeed not. That had already been discovered. They were searching for Nefertari's mummy. What do you think happened to them? Oh, it's best you not concern yourself about that now, given your current location. Have you heard of Abdullah? Yes, yes I have. He is December on my Men of Archaeology calendar. You're kidding me. Does that exist? It existed the second I made it. Is he there with you? Yes. He seems full of himself. He is? Oh, I am not an advocate of pulpy romance novels. But if I were, I'd call that an archibald trait. In Chapter 1, he'd swagger into the excavation site, the picture of a rascal with his dusty leather jacket and decidedly European haircut. His cocky ne'er-do-well smirk displaying his perfectly white teeth, but by the end he'd be sweetly holding flowers and saying, Professor Hotchkiss, I'm dying to discuss your latest publication. A colleague of mine has guilted me into editing her latest romance novel, and I must confess I cannot wait until the project is completed. Reading page after page is absolutely wreaking havoc on my metaphors. Anyway, what were we talking about? I no longer know. Abdullah, that's what. He's a cold-blooded hotshot with only one setting. Success. Oh, sorry. I've also been helping my nephew break into the movie trailer business. Oh, Hotchkiss, why must you always burn the candle at both ends? He's a good archaeologist who knows Egypt inside and out. He could teach you a thing or two, just don't pick up the attitude. What do you know about Nefertari? <gasps> ah, a love story. I'll break out the tissue papyrus because when I'm done, there won't be a dry Horus in the house. Uh, what? Look it up, dear. Ramses II and Nefertari shared a love so vast, the world could scarcely contain it. I'm talking about the kind of love you spell capital L, capital O, heart instead of a V, capital E. They stood side by side and ruled the world, but as they saw the years stretch out before them, they were keenly aware that a handful of decades would never cut it. They needed to be together always. That's sweet. And relevant. The ancient Egyptians believed that life was little more than a dress rehearsal for eternity. I found records that they concocted a plan to be together forever, side by side. Why not be buried side by side? They foresaw a volatile future for their kingdom, and they were correct. They knew they would have to enact safeguards. That's why in 1904, when QV-66, the so-called Tomb of Nefertari, was found, her body was not there. What are the chances we found Nefertari's tomb? If I were a gambling Hotchkiss, I'd say... 
I still don't get all this business with QV-66. Why build a fake tomb? For the same reason I never carry my passport in my purse when I travel. Some things are too valuable to leave in a tempting place. Can you help me sort out some canopic jars? Oh my, oh, oh my yes, let's see. A human and three animals. A jackal was Duwamata, baboon, harpy, and Kebasenuef. They also represented the four cardinal points, each protecting a sacred organ. I seem to remember that Hoppy was the lungs. You mentioned an expedition that found QV-66, Nefertari's tomb. It was one of the most significant finds in archaeology. They call it the Sistine Chapel of Egypt. It's where my fascination with the royalty of Egypt was born. The color alone took my breath away. We think of ancient Egypt as being a subdued sand color, but it was a riotous display with all the visual delights of a midsummer gelato shop cooler case. And you don't think Nefertari was entombed there? They only found kneecaps, which supposedly means that her tomb was robbed. You disagree? I do. What good is the mummy without the context? It's the placement in the tomb that makes the mummy valuable. Why is Nefertari so important? There are two queens I find most fascinating in ancient Egypt, and for exactly the same reason. They were hidden. Hatshepsut is the first. I think I've heard of her. She was the pharaoh that was almost removed from the historical record, right? Exactly! Twenty-some years of peace and stability, and after she dies, but most the thirds, ancient cronies try to erase her from the record. Why? Jealousy, revenge, fear that his reign would never equal hers. You name it, but you can't keep a good woman down. Despite the efforts of Thutmose Third's supporters, her legacy endures. And Nefertari? In my opinion, she's the opposite. She was obsessively preserved in the historical record, but it was her tomb that was hidden. How sure are you that Nefertari's tomb was hidden? There was something strange about QV-66. I think that might be why it is off limits to this day. It is? To you and me, at the very least. There is a rumor that the tomb has a clue to the true location of Nefertari's mummy. Really? Who knows? I'll tell you this. I didn't have time to read all of the hieroglyphs, but I noticed that the syntax was a little, shall we say, wonky? I don't know how hieroglyph syntax could be non-wonky. True. It was almost as if Nefertari and Ramses II had their own language. Lily seems to be taking this curse business very seriously. I thought you were, Lily. <sighs> the other Lily? Hotchkiss prank! Oh, you're such a good sport, Nadine. <laughs> That's a little silly of her, don't you think? Curses may only be a figment of our overactive imaginations. That's what I think. There are more pressing things to worry about. Most Egyptologists die because the desert is inhospitable and positively crawling with diseases. Horrid molds and bacteria that have been breeding for thousands of years unchecked. And let's not forget the lack of structural integrity of most of the tombs. That's less than reassuring. Oh dear, everybody dies, but life isn't worth living if you don't take a few risks. Although I guess I should stress that everyone dies much faster in the desert. Much, much faster. I'll let you go. Bye, dear. Wow, well, she talks a whole bunch. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so um, we've got the tomb, like, open, but, uh, but we don't know what this is all about. So I guess we'll have to figure that out. Um before we mess around with it. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you did like this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye!